I figure you all are old enough to already know about the birds and bees, so I'm going to tell about the birds and beavers instead. And it's really the story of a river. We call it the San Pedro River now, but 200 years ago, when the white fur trappers came down into southeast Arizona and saw this river, they were delighted to see that it had so many beavers living in it that they called it the Beaver River. This river flows north out of Mexico, about 140 miles, and 200 years ago, there was a beaver dam about every mile along. These dams checked the flow of the river, even during July, the season of the monsoon rains, when torrents came down into the valley and dashed along the river. But the beaver dams were well maintained and they held. They held the water back so that it would soak into the earth, soak into the banks and spread out. It made water meadows and, and uh, swamps around the river. And these were inhabited by all sorts of insects and amphibians and water birds. And then there were all of the creatures that came down to eat the lush green grass, the, the rabbits, the deer. And of course, there were the four-footeds who came down to prey upon them in those days, not just jaguar and ocelot, but black bear would come down into that valley. And the trees, the tall cottonwoods and willows were full of birds. There was another kind of bird, the western willow flycatcher. And it was connected with the beavers in a special way. Whenever the beavers would chomp down a young willow sapling, the roots would grow up into a thicket of brush. And that willow brush was the one place that the western willow flycatchers liked to build their nests. They depended on the beavers for that. And that was what the trappers found 200 years ago when they came to this long green corridor through the Arizona desert. And they got busy because you see in the early 1800s, a gentleman was not a gentleman without a tall felt hat. And the best felt was made from beaver fur. Now in Europe, they had pretty much wiped out all their beavers. They had, the trappers had been through Eastern Canada, the Northern states, they, here they were all the way down to Arizona looking for more and more beaver pelts to make those tall felt hats. So they got busy and they trapped as many beavers as they could. And when they had pretty well cleaned out the river, they moved on looking for more. Well, without the beaver to maintain the dams, when those heavy July rains came through, they beat at the dams and began to break them up. As the dams broke up, the water could go faster and faster, pick up sand and gravel and use it to grind out the river bed. And as the river bed channeled deeper and deeper, almost became a trough as much as 12 feet below where it had been before, of course, the water level sank in the earth all around the river. The western willow flycatchers watched as the brush grew too tall to suit them, and they moved on. They moved out to the streams in the mountains trying to find another place. It wasn't as cool, it wasn't as shaded and moist and green as the river valley had been, but they kept going. Well, more people came to the valley of the San Pedro. The ranchers looked at the grass that was growing up in what had been water meadows. And they said, well, we can just run our cattle here. They'll eat that grass. But this grass was not like the bunch grass of the prairies. And the stomping of cattle's hoofs destroyed it rather than encouraging it. Pretty soon there was just bare ground where the cattle had been. So they moved their cattle on elsewhere. And the farmer said, oh, we can plow it. 
And they did for a while, but with the water level going deeper and deeper as the unmaintained dams were breaking down, pretty soon it wasn't much good in many places for farming. The soldiers in Fort Huachuca Fort Huachuca were sent down to dynamite the remaining dams because people thought that standing water would breed mosquitoes and you didn't want to get malaria. Miners came in to cut the tall trees and use the wood to shore up their, their mines deep going into the hillsides looking for silver and copper. And by 1900, that river wasn't good for much except birds, not the western willow flycatcher, but other birds. You see that north-south corridor of the river, it became a flyway for the migrating birds. Had, I guess, always had been. They had to stop and rest. Here was water, here were insects, a place, a safe place to roost. And after a bit, Bird watchers, Audubon Society types, they began to hear that there were so many species of birds that passed through heading north in the spring, south in the fall. You could pretty much check off your life list if you came there to look at the birds. Became a popular spot for bird watching, wasn't much good for anything else. Well, by 1986, the Bureau of Land Management decided that maybe this should be made into a, a riparian reserve area in order to preserve it for the birds and the other species that came through. And, and so they banned any more cattle ranching, they banned any more mining, they, uh, cutting of, of timber, they banned the farming. But uh, in 1999, I found that the poor San Pedro River had still not really recovered. The water was scouring out deeper and deeper every year. In fact, in 1999, American Rivers Association published a list of the most degraded rivers in America, and the San Pedro was number four not so good. But that was the year that a volunteer group, the Friends of San Pedro, decided to do something about it. And they realized that although ranching and farming and timbering had been banned, the reason the river wasn't really recovering was mm -hmm. because something was missing. And I bet you know what that was, the beavers. Well, where are you gonna get beavers in Arizona? Turns out, Beavers had been causing trouble in the irrigation ditches um, around Phoenix, where there are acres and acres of winter vegetables and beautiful flowers grown with irrigation. The beavers were a problem. They wanted to stop those ditches up. They were a problem at water treatment plants where they were blocking the sewage. They were a problem at electrical generating plants where they had to have water to cool the generators. You want beavers? Come and get them. And so they did. They trapped those beavers. They gave them all kinds of shots and things to make sure they'd be healthy. They put nice little uh, locating radio collars on them and they turned them loose in the San Pedro. And within a few years, a couple dozen beavers had transformed it. It was not on American River's most rated list at all because those dams had checked the flow of the river. It was still pretty deep. I, in, when I saw it, it was like 12 feet down from where it had been, but it was still in those ditches, but they were bringing back the water meadows. They were watering the earth so that during the dry season, the banks would slowly serve as springs and put water back into the river and keep it running year round instead of going dry. The bird watchers still came, of course, and they were delighted after a while to look around and see that the western willow flycatchers had returned to the San Pedro River. 
humans can really mess things up. But when we try to put things back together again, we have to make sure we keep all the pieces and the beavers were the missing piece.